is Doctor Who B&M Collector Sets a sequel, as today I'll be taking a look at the second Doctor Who B&M 2017 Collector Set for this year, in the fourth Doctor Collector figure set, and it is quite relevant that I describe it as a sequel actually, because 9 times out of 10 the sequels ain't as good as the originals, and here we have three figures that have been released alongside the Forbidden Planet line before, and are notably different to these three, so of course we have K9 in his classic paint application, we have the fourth Doctor, and we have a random Leela figure in there as well, this is in fact the second fourth Doctor Collector set that we've seen so far, I do believe that the previous version was the City of Death 4th Doctor, D84, and another 4th Doctor villain. I can't quite remember what that was. It may have been a Zygon, I can't recall. But yeah, I didn't buy that one because I already had the original versions. But yeah, I mainly bought this one for K9. I'm not even going to lie because most people have only bought this one for K9 because every single classic fan in the world wanted a classic K9. So of course the box is exactly the same from what we've seen before. Get a lovely window at the front displaying the figures nicely. So if you're one of those people that does keep your figures in the box, then these are pretty good sets for you. At the very top, we get 5 5 slash 14 centimeter scale collector series doctor who logo the fourth doctor collector figure set includes a fourth doctor leela and k9 mark one there at the bottom character options logo on the opposite side of the box you get the fourth doctor and leela and then on the back of the box itself once again exactly the same issues to last time doctor who logo the title and then we get three massive images of the figures in this set along with the name cards at the very bottom much like the previous one it would be nice to see if these are in fact shrunk down and we had a little bit of information about each character at the bottom as otherwise it looks a little bit bland and a little bit knockoff, and I don't really like it too much. And it would be nice for this set specifically if this one had, in fact, little episode titles at the right bottom so you knew what episode these figures were from. Because to be quite honest, for this set, that would be incredibly handy. But yeah, that's really it for the box. Now let's take a look at K9 first, because let's face it, that's the one that we're all here for. It's K9, it's off the studio set and slams into the shelf next to it. But yeah, this is K9 from the classic series. We've been wanting this one for a very long time, and guess what? It is exactly the same to the new series one. However, with a slightly different paint app. To be quite honest, the effort put in with this figure isn't exactly very much, but it means all the difference because we can finally have a classic series K9 that vaguely resembles the one actually seen in the TV series. I do presume that there is a few different things with this figure that are in fact inaccurate from what is seen in the classic series. However, I'm just happy that we finally have this variant because at the end of the day, it's one of which that didn't really take that much effort, but it took so long to see it released. Straight into that comparison and taking a look at the new K9 next to the previous non-electronic K9s that we've seen so far in the line. I'm going to start off with this one because it's the one that I like to call the new series K9 and there isn't exactly too much to it. It's basically the one in the middle, however, with a slightly darker paint app and a lot of different scratches and rust and random brown dots applied to make it look like it's been battened, torn, and things like that. But yeah, there isn't really too much to that one. I'm just going to take a look at your two standard K9s that are all in nice new condition. So this is in fact the one that was released alongside the season 18 for Doctor, the first ever thing that I reviewed on this channel. Let's not remind ourselves of that lovely occasion again. But yeah, it's pretty much, there's a few differences, as you can see. Generally, it is exactly the same sculpt. The most obvious thing is, of course, that the classic K9 is now a completely different shade of grey. This is now a much more charcoal y grey, as opposed to the bluish silver on this one. And then the other comparison details, a few minor tweaks here and there. The lettering generally seems to be exactly the same. However, the piping form along the bottom on the newer version is now black, as opposed to the lighter greyish sort of version on the new series one. Then we have the tail on the latest version is now completely black as opposed to the black small piece at the bottom and then the silver tip at the top there. The computer bank sort of pad thing at the very top on the original version was a silver with a few colourful buttons and now on the classic series version it is now completely black along those colourful buttons once again retained. And then on the back once again nothing really too much to talk about generally that darker paint app once again. However we do of course have that little computer unit at the very back which I do believe was in fact a screen in the classic series. This has now got a black frame around it along sort of a cream section in the middle and on the new series one it is of course just painted over and then the final other changes is of course the head is obviously the darker shade much like the rest of the body and the collar and the piping below this the collar does seem to be a little bit different on this version however compared to the remote control classic canine that we've got about a year or so ago now it does tend to be a completely different pattern so i'm presuming that is a little bit off and then we of course have the piping here on the latest version it is now black as opposed to this lightish grayish paint app on the new series version so of course one of the main features on the previous version that was of course inaccurate to what is seen in the classic series was that you could press this little panel at the top and then it would reveal all the little computer and machinery stuff from the new series. Now on the latest version they have removed that feature or at least that's what they claim to have done but yeah we do of course have K9 here and if you press this little button at the top there what will be the panel it doesn't in fact move whatsoever. However if you press just a little bit of pressure on this whatsoever you will start to notice that this panel in fact starts to give away and if you get the correct little angle with your nail there the panel does 
in fact get prized off. Now they've removed the actual push go feature underneath here, but it does in fact reveal the computer bank underneath once again. However, this time it is exactly the same sculpt, it's just unpainted, so it doesn't really work how it normally does. However, if you really do want that little computer bank piece underneath, it is still there, and maybe you could paint it up or something like that. And the panel thing just easily slips back on, and it doesn't in fact slide off whatsoever, which is good. So as I say, they sort of took away the feature, but haven't at the same time. They haven't exactly covered it up very well, because it is technically still there. Detail-wise for K9, there isn't really too much to talk about, to be honest, because he is, of course, a robotic dog. He is pretty small, he's within scale with the 5-inch figures, and he is pretty nice. It retains all the same details that the previous versions have done. Unfortunately, we still have this massive sort of mold mark down the side. It would be nice if that was removed. And we do also have these silver handle pieces as well, which I don't know if those are accurate to what is seen in the Classic series. The remote control version has it, but I, once again, that is taken off the sculpt of the new series version. At the very front, the lettering has been done very well. We do get the silvery stuff there, which has been painted rather sharply no paint bleed on that whatsoever and then we have the computer pad at the top there once again a little bit accurate to what's seen in the tv series itself i like the way that we've got the dog collar on the side and i also like the way that we have once again a few grooves and indents much like how we had in the tv show itself and the head has also been replicated very nicely once again exactly the same sculpt i like the way that we've got the gun barrel at the very front where he can shoot and stuff like how he does i guess on occasions when he gets a little bit angry and then we have of course the visor at the top which once again has been achieved by just using a little bit of red clear plastic and once again we do get the detailing of the little sort of scannery piece that normally comes out as well as the eye or ears or whatever you want to call them mini satellite dish things a little bit of a silver paint app so yeah he's quite a nice figure at the very bottom we do also get the pull back and go motion which is something that is prominent on the other releases as well which is nice if you want to pull back and go k9 or you play with your figures or something like that of course i don't i just stick mine in the cabinet like the sad person that i am and then of course we get the tail at the very back here which once again is made of sort of a more flimsier plastic so it doesn't snap or anything if it hits onto something whilst doing this action here but yeah pretty much it's a nice figure i can remember the days where this used to be more than an accessory than an actual figure to be honest but let's face it character options have done a lot of cutbacks since then so this is now a full actual figure or at least that's what it's classed as unbelievably we have the fourth Doctor with his delightful psychotic grin as per usual. Now this is of course previously the Pyramids of Mars released fourth Doctor that I do believe that we got maybe in 2010, 2011, something like that. I don't particularly know, it was a rather random single carded fourth Doctor that we got and we never got it again until today. Now I'm a little bit sort of annoyed with this figure to be quite honest because I expected something a little bit different from the previous versions. However, this is officially where these budget sets hit the fan a little bit. The detail on this figure compared to the other version. I don't know if it's just because of my personal preference when it comes to figures, but this figure tends to be a lot more vibrant in colour, a lot more brighter in certain parts, a few more sharper details that I do in fact like, but at the same time, some of those corners have just been cut with this one to really make me question just is, was this worth it at all? Some people think that this is your standard Pyramids of Mars Fourth Doctor. I personally like to call it more of a Fist the Evil, Robots of Death, Fourth Doctor and Leela era style of Fourth Doctor because it is still slightly different to the other version. So moving on to the comparison, on the left we have the newer version as part of the B&M collector set, and then on the right we have the original Forbidden Planet version. Now, the head there is a quite obvious difference, the first one being he is pretty much bright orange in skin tone. Don't particularly know what's going on there, it's something that was sort of leaked in with the 13 Doctors set and a few of the 5.5 .5 collector series stuff. However, some of the details do seem a little bit more prominent. I really like the stuff applied to the teeth, I think that they are a lot more whiter compared to the original version, I like the lip paint application as well. The eyes are a little bit possessed to an extent he kind of looks like he's been taking something but yeah he looks a little bit well just very vibrant in the face compared to the original version however unfortunately once again due to the paint apps that have been used on the face some of those smaller details that were picked up on the original version some of the more sharper paint apps such as the lighter pink around the eyes on the original version some of the creases around the face as well especially around the eyes and the grin somehow seem to have been lost on the latest version which is a little bit of a shame and the newer version just looks a little bit odd i know that a few people People would like this version more because it is more prominent but for me it just seems a little bit less real and a little bit more cartoon a few other detail changes there is of course the hat as well on the latest version it is a little bit darker compared to the original version this is a little bit more of a greenish color and the same applies for the hair in fact actually they do seem to be a little bit more of a highlight on the original version compared to just a solid brown on this one 
Taking a look at the waistcoats, now once again a little bit of a similar situation. As you can see on this one, the yellows are generally a lot brighter, and so are the reds to be honest. We still have a few details in there of all the buttons and things like that, which is nice to see, and the cravat at the very top. However, once again, on the new version, the cravat is a lot brighter, the waistcoat is a lot brighter, and on the original version, we have a few more sharper details. As you can see, the patterning generally of the small checkers of grey and the red seem to be a lot more sharper, a lot more detailed, a lot more like they are in the actual show, compared to the latest version which once again seems to cut corners slightly. The same applies for the scarf as you can see once again a little bit of a change up in paint application on the latest version. It generally seems to be a little bit more brighter in colour especially the yellows, the reds and the blues. Once again we do have a few details and things of scuffs and things on there as well. However unfortunately once again much like the original version in fact it's only one side of the scarf that is in fact painted. So yeah that is a little bit of a shame but I can't exactly complain considering the original versions like it. However the scarf does sort of unaid him standing up. It's, it's working now unfortunately but annoyingly quite often this piece at the very bottom makes him fall over so yeah that's something that was rectified on the later fourth doctor releases seem to have came back on this version and then of course at the very bottom we do get the gray trousers once again these pretty much are exactly the same to the original or maybe in fact a little bit darker and then of course at the very bottom the same detailing of the shoes so, yeah and then we also have the coat as well on the latest version it seems to be more of a chocolatey brown the latest version it seems to be more of a glossy brown so yeah once again i think i like the original one a little bit more to an extent i don't particularly know with that one i may like this one more on that extent but yeah this one sort of does things that this one doesn't and this one does more detail more than this one it's a little bit of an odd bag i think that if you mix them both together you'll probably get a definitive figure with it but yeah generally once again a bit of an unfortunate corner cutting with these two figures Overall, for this fourth Doctor, he is a little bit of a mixed bag. He's a really weird one, because if you're in a situation where you have the original version, you will know how superior the original version was. However, if you don't have the original version, this is a really nice counterpart for it. I absolutely love the original version. It's one of my favourite fourth Doctor figures that we did ever get. So naturally, I do like this one, because it is exactly the same sculpt. It's just a shame to see that some of those details that were a lot sharper on the original one have now been taken out. However, I do like some of the details that have been applied as well. I like the brightly coloured scarf. I like the detail that has been applied to the teeth i think that that is a lot more like how it was in the actual tv show and looks a little bit better compared to the other version as well it just seems to be a little bit more brighter and a bit better it's a shame that the other paint apps on the face or however do seem to let it down slightly so yeah it just seems to be one of those figures that cuts a few corners generally for articulation it is your exactly the same stuff head sort of turns from side to side a little bit 360 at the arms upper articulation as well bend at the elbow 360 at the wrist t crotch joint 360 at the thigh and bend at the knee as as well so yeah generally pretty decent articulation the all fourth doctors he does of course also come with his sonic screwdriver it's nothing new we've seen loads and loads and loads of these before it's just your average sonic nice detailing red emitter black band at the top however unfortunately another flaw that's with this figure is he can't in fact hold it for some reason they've got the sculpt there however the hand hasn't in fact been cupped correctly meaning that he literally can't hold the sonic screwdriver whatsoever i think that the only method to get that actually fixed is probably the boil and pop method and sort of make the plastic really weak and then bend it back around and hope it goes into place but yeah i'm not that bothered that he's not going to hold the sonic to be honest but at the same time for the people who don't have the original version i can imagine that being a little bit annoying in comparison to just a few fourth doctor figures you know just to give a little bit of a rough idea here we have the fourth doctor next to the majority of all the other fourth doctors released so far in the line to be quite honest this is probably one of the worst ones for me i don't really like it that much i definitely prefer the original pyramids mars version a little bit more however i do like the vibrant details that have been done to the scarf and the face but generally it's just another fourth doctor if you don't have this other version and there's a few more that you can get just a few, like the City of Death one maybe, or the Season 18 one, or the Pyramids of Mars one, or the Seeds of Doom one, or the Sontaran Experiment one, or the Destiny of the Daleks one, or the Keeper of Traken one, or your standard first ever one. There's a lot of Fourth Doctors, in case you haven't noticed. Because finally we have Leela played by Louise Jimson. Now this figure was originally released in the Invasion of Time set that came with this delightful Sontaran here with his punched out eyes as you can see. But yeah this is once again a rather unusual figure. A lot of people assumed that it would be just a direct re-release but it turns out that it's had a little bit of a fourth Doctor treatment and much like that figure we do in fact have a few rather unusual corners cut and a few paint apps here and there as well that have been updated. However nothing as severe as the fourth Doctor figure that I've just been reviewing so I guess that is a good thing.
Stretch into the comparison some of the previous Leela figures that we've seen so far in the line. To be quite honest, I like the original more. For me, there's nothing that's going to beat the original version, the original Comic Con Leela figure that I'm glad that hopefully we're never going to see re-released again. It would be nice to see that that one actually keeps its rarity. But yeah, generally, for this Leela figure, it is exactly the same sculpt to the previous version and contains exactly the same detail to the other ones as well. But the quite obvious difference, as you can see, is the almost yellowy dress that she's got going on on the newest version is now a lot more yellow compared to the previous version that is a lot more cream that tends to be near enough the same shade as the image of Fendal version as well. The little collar piece necklace thing, I don't particularly know what it is, more so a necklace probably, is a little bit more of a jet black colour and the boots also seem to have a little bit of an updated paint app and much like the Tom Baker figure she seems to for some reason have a little bit more of a darker skin which I guess technically for the show wise Leela did have a little bit of a darker skin in the Invasion of Time so I guess I can sort of let this figure pass because it kind of makes sense. However there is also one final rather unusual difference that just baffles me completely. So when we got the original Face of Evil San Diego Comic Con Leela, we had something slightly different going on on her wrists. As you can see, we have this little bracelet thing which has been painted in a slightly blackish colour. We have a little bit of detailing on that, it's just, it's nothing really too important to be quite honest, it's just there. However, when we got the Invasion of Time Leela, we got a little bit of a different sculpt on the hand. This is the one that came with Score the Sontaran. As you can see, we got a little bit of an update where the bracelet is now no longer there. It is a slightly different sculpt sculpted hand. So this sculpt exists, a non-bracelet hand sculpt actually exists on this figure. However, on the B&M set one, the latest version is exactly the same to this one here pretty much. We got that sculpt, didn't we, for the original Face of Evil Leela, with the bracelet actually sculpted onto the hand. However, they've decided just to paint over it in a skin colour and hopes nobody notices. So I don't particularly know what's going on there, considering the sculpt actually exists, a non-bracelet sculpt actually exists. Other than this one, they just decided to use the one that technically means more effort. But yeah, that is a little bit odd. Don't take a closer look at the figure now. To be quite honest, it's nothing really too impressive. I think that the likeness to Louise Jameson hasn't exactly always been too standout. I think it kind of looks like her. You can tell it's meant to be Leela, so we have a few nice pin apps on the face, a little bit similar to the original version where we of course have the different eye details in there, the nice pupils that have been done very well, the eyebrows, the lips have also been painted very naturally, and the skin tone is also rather natural. The hair has also been done rather nicely with a few highlights here and there as well, some lighter strokes in there to bring out some of the more thinner details. Fortunately mine has a little bit of an odd blotch thing on which is a little bit annoying, but it is a lot more of a sort of toffee brownish colour as you can see, a lot more prominent when it comes to that, which I think once again, I may like this version of hair a little bit more even if it's inaccurate to what is seen in the tv show i just like that slightly brighter color but yeah on this version it is now a little bit darker we have the bracelet once again which has been done or at least the necklace that has been done in a little bit of a more jet black color and then moving down we of course have her costume that she wore in the tribe of the 17 probably i don't know it looks a little bit tribish to an extent doesn't it nothing really too much going on once again a few details around the back as you can see of this nice little pocket detailing of the ugly sculpt line once again going down the side something that can't be helped we have a few darker details there of a few lines that have just been painted on to represent the different flaps of clothing. You have a little bit more of a creasing detail there, as you can see a little bit of a stitch pattern once again, which is a rather nice attention to detail. Then a few more darker, slightly weathered sort of details that have been added in to bring out a few of the creases. Similar detailing towards the front there with a few painted sections added on to represent the different flaps. On the arms, nothing really too much going on. We have sort of the little, once again, sort of bracelet pieces with a few different ties and things on there. The same thing is prominent at the other side and nothing really too much else going on with the arms. The legs are just your average barely legs and then of course at the very bottom, we do get the boots once again with exactly the same sort of battered crease detailing on there. So you also have the knife pouch in there as well, which does in fact actually work, which will be going onto the knife in a little bit. But average Leela, nothing really too special, it's just your average figure really, but the detailing is still pretty nice if you don't have the original version. As I briefly mentioned earlier, of course Leela does come with a knife, much like all the previous Leela figs did, I do believe. It's just your average Leela knife to be quite honest, and she can actually hold it, unlike the fourth Doctor with his sonnet screwdriver, so that is good. So you just have the paint up set of the brown handle, and then the silver tip at the top and she can now stab something or whatever she wants to do but yeah that's nice i'm glad that they've included it and more so i'm glad that she can actually hold the bloody thing overall for the leela figure i think that is a pretty decent variant to be honest if you have the original version then that one is most likely better but this one could be as well it's all down to personal preference if you generally don't have a leela in your collection then this is definitely a decent figure for you it does have a few flaws here and there however it's not as major as the fourth doctor figure so it is still sort of a well-deserved decent leela figure in the collection. However, for me personally, nothing is ever going to beat the original Face of Evil version because it just had a lot of accessories. I personally prefer the costume. It is generally a lot more iconic when it comes to Leela in the actual TV show itself. But as I say, this one is still a decent counterpart. 
So overall for the B&M exclusive 2017 Fourth Doctor Collector figure set, it is a little bit of a mixed bag. Talking from the perspective of the classic figure collector, comparing this to the Monsters Collector set where you had a Tomb Cyber Controller variant that was pretty decent and a Attack Cyberman variant that we've been wanting for quite a long time. And then you have this one where you basically have one figure that we've been wanting for quite a long time and even that is just a simple reprint and not a retool in any way, unlike the Attack Cyberman in the K9 figure. And then you just have two filler figures that, fair enough, are variants to an extent. However, not exactly particularly wanted variants are not exactly very good variants. I think that this very easily could have been rectified by giving the fourth Doctor the non-hatted serious head. That would have made the figure just a little bit different. I mean, when I put this on my shelf, I am going to be changing over the heads because the head does in fact come off. You can pop this off and pop it back on again. So yeah, I will be doing that just to make this a little bit more of a different variant. Changing this on the figure that it actually is, is a figure that just cuts corners to be quite honest and definitely isn't as good as the original. Leela is just Leela. The details that have been changed on this one are fairly decent. If you have the original one though however it just changes that weren't exactly needed to be quite honest. Speaking for somebody who doesn't really have any classic figures then this set is definitely something for you. You have a decent K9 figure, a fairly average fourth doctor and a Leela figure. That's brilliant. You basically get the ideal TARDIS team in here. It's a pretty decent buy and for $16.99 at the end of the day you can't exactly go wrong. So appeal to some people more than others but generally if you're the classic figure collector you're just gonna need to sort of put up with this one and live with the fact that you've just paid 16.99 for 1k9 in your life but it is pretty decent one at the same time so i'm fairly happy with it so that's that for this set and i guess that also brings to the end the b&m 2017 collector set three pack reviews as i shall not be reviewing the ninth doctor set as it is an incredibly lazy one and i already have the original version so it will be a waste of 16.99 so i guess i'll see you all in the next review whatever that may be the figures products audio dramas i don't know or even some books here and there let's just see what comes around the corner next bye for now